Greedy meshing is a well-known meshing algorithm for voxel terrain. Some people think this is a must-have, while others keep saying it just isn't worth it. So which is it? Follow along to see how a project that was meant to just compare two algorithms ended up also comparing GDescript to C-sharp. We will look at the idea behind greedy meshing, the implementation, and finally we will test and compare different meshing solutions. So what even is greedy meshing? Let's first consider a single cube. The cube has six faces that each can be drawn using a single quad or two triangles. Now let's expand on this. We can take a single chunk from our voxel terrain and only look at one type of face at the time. If we only look at one slice, well, then all of a sudden we're looking at a 2D plane. From this, it's somewhat easy to understand that we might be able to combine several of the quad faces in this plane into larger quads. We now have less quads and thus triangles to draw. This is what greedy meshing is about. Drawing less triangles can make our game run faster, which can then leave time to other exciting stuff. The problem we now need to solve is then how to decide which faces to combine. In the greedy meshing algorithm, we start in a corner and then work our way up. When we can't extend further upwards, we will try to extend the current quad to the side. And then we continue this again and again, until all faces in our plane are covered. We then move to the next slice for this face, and so on. The greedy meshing algorithm might be easy to understand conceptually, but I found it a bit more complex to implement in a satisfying way. On top of this, it will probably be slower than the skip hidden faces algorithm we used to mesh our chunks in one of my previous voxel videos. To make it easier to understand the pros and cons and decide what to move forward with, I wanted to test and compare the two solutions properly. So I made abstract classes for both the terrain generation and the mesh generation. This made it easier to switch between the different terrain and mesh algorithms I wanted to combine and test. I also made a logger class that I used to create data files for my tests. This logs the position of a chunk, the number of voxels in it, how many vertices are used for its mesh, and finally the time spent creating the mesh. I've included all of this in the project files that are available through selected tiers and Patreon. Feel free to use any of this to create your own tests. At first, I tried to implement the algorithm from scratch in a way that would be easy to explain and understand, and without looking at other people's code. This is just how I usually prefer to start something like this. I started with just a single face and then wanted to expand from there. However, I quickly realized that it was so slow that I wasn't really motivated to figure out the little tricks that would make it possible to reuse the same code for all six faces. Instead, I decided to port the JavaScript code from Mikula Lysenko to GDScript, with a few minor changes that made it just a bit easier to read and understand for me personally. I've left a link in the description to both their blog post that includes a description of greedy meshing and their code on GitHub. I did this to make sure that it wasn't just my implementation that was the problem. And luckily for me, this was just as slow and definitely not worth comparing and analyzing like this. On my setup, it would just take way too long to create the test data that I had planned. And 
this is why I had to pivot the entire setup for this video. I had to see if implementing the algorithm in C Sharp would make a difference. Success! I ported the algorithm that just skips hidden faces as well as the greedy meshing algorithm and tested both with a height map terrain. The plots here shows the average running time from three runs of both algorithms in GDescript versus C Sharp. Now, I would have loved to show you how this was implemented step by step, as I usually do in my tutorials. But I honestly think that the best way to understand this code is to just sit with it for a while and try to read and understand it on your own. And here are a few pointers that will hopefully help you out a bit. The two loops here, combined with the u and v variables and the pos and q vectors, are what's making the rest work for any of the six faces. Next we have this part. This creates a mask for the 2D plane we're currently looking at. If a voxel face is hidden, or if it's air, then we set the mask to air. Otherwise, it's just the type of the voxel. After the mask array is created, the next part then finds the quads we want to combine. When the width and the height of a new quad has been found, we use the add face method to create two triangles for the quad and update the mask by setting the positions we just used to air so they won't be used by any other quads. I would also have loved to implement a version that's a bit more beginner friendly. But in the end, I just didn't have time to do this on top of porting and comparing everything properly. Usually when we want to compare optimization algorithms, we look at time versus speed. Faster algorithms will usually use more space and vice versa. So to compare the pros and cons of the two meshing algorithms, I've made these plots. On the left, we have the number of vertices used to draw a chunk. And on the right, we have the time spent generating the mesh for a chunk. Both are sorted by the number of voxels in the chunks. Another important thing to consider is also the simplicity and maintainability of the algorithm, but we can't really measure and compare these in the same manner. It's clear that the greedy meshing algorithm is slower than when we just skip the hidden faces. The running time is also independent of the number of voxels in the chunk, assuming there is at least one voxel. This makes sense since most of the computation is the same for positions with a voxel and those that are just air. The skip hidden faces algorithm, on the other hand, skips all the air voxels. So this is faster the fewer voxels that are in a chunk. This is also why the time difference falls when the number of voxels increases. So greedy meshing is slower. But what we lose in speed, we gain in space, as it produces a lot less vertices. And this is why we might consider using this algorithm. The mesh generation might be slower, but our world will most likely run faster afterwards, because we have to render fewer triangles to the screen. I also tested the two algorithms with a terrain generated using 3D noise with two different cutoff values. The results are very similar to when we created a height map. But of course, the difference between the number of vertices is decreased when the world is more sparsely populated. In the height map I first created, we only had four colors. And this isn't very different from having just a binary terrain. What will happen if we increased the number of colors? These plots show the results from a world using 40 colors. 
The running time is still about the same, but of course the number of vertices increases. However, there are still a lot less vertices than if we just used the skip hidden faces algorithm. It's important to know what flaws this experiment has. First of all, my implementation of the skip hidden faces algorithm only looks at the voxels within a single chunk. This means that we have to draw all the outer faces of the chunk or the terrain will have holes in it. A better solution would be to make the chunks able to look at the surrounding chunks and skip more of the border faces. This would reduce the vertices count for the algorithm. However, I don't expect this to change the overall result of this experiment. Another thing we could explore further is how big an impact the fewer vertices actually have on the frame rate. So which algorithm should you choose? Which one do you think will be the better choice? I'm going to repeat myself and say that it depends, and there really isn't a one objectively right or wrong here. It depends on you and your project, and how well you understand your implementations of the algorithms. I encourage you to try to implement both and test for yourself what the pros and cons would be for the terrain you're going for. Maybe it would even make sense to combine the two using skip hidden faces when the voxel count is low and greedy meshing when it's higher. In my case, I'm keeping the greedy meshing algorithm, but I might also experiment later with combining the two. And that was all for this video. Feel free to leave a comment with suggestions for what I should explore next. I hope you liked this video and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future.